I'm Claire Louise Hay from BeHealing.com. Welcome to Psychic Cafe. We're here for the midweek guidance. What's going on? Now, I'm giving one question readings. If you want to book in for one of those, you're very welcome while I'm live. If you're on here live with me, check out that pinned comment, the comment that's pinned up top of the live chat that tells you how to do it. Book yourself in, you can ask anything. It can be general guidance, guidance on your career, guidance on your love life, or you can ask very specific questions too, yes or no answer questions. If you ask a yes or no answer question, I'll also pull cards out, of course, to give you way more detail about it. Um, uh, the only questions that I don't really like, but you can ask them anyway, is the when. When will this happen? Because you are, in fact, in charge of that. So I won't tell you when, but I will tell you how you can get yourself there, because really, it's up to you. Morning, Mandy. So book yourself in at any time. If you're watching the replay, hello, come live sometime if you can make it. Um, but yeah, you can book yourselves in too, because I'll do yours right at the start of the next live show, which hopefully will be, will be on Friday. If I'm Coming across as a little bit discombobulated, it's because I'm on painkillers, I'm high. <laughs> no, I'm not that high. I'm not, they're not that, um, they're not the strong ones, you know. But I had minor surgery yesterday on my shin. I said on, on Monday that I'd had a, an infected shin, I think an insect. This is what they said at the hospital. They think an insect bit me and that's why it just kept on getting more and more and more infected anyway. They cut it open and cleaned it all out and I've got to go back every day for the next week to get it all cleaned up and stuff. So I'm on antibiotics, I'm on painkillers too, which I need at the moment because even walking on it is, it moves, it moves the um, bandage, you know. Morning, just me and the moon. Mandy, is it? Is it another Mandy? I can't remember. Um, should have seen me this morning having a shower with this bandage on my leg. I had a shower last night. It's really hot here at the moment, so I'm trying to keep this <laughs> dry. I was so proud of myself, you know, because what I decided, and I'd, I'd played around like without the water on last night to figure it out, figure out how to do it. But because high style bathrooms tend to be open, you know, so the, the toilet is next to the shower, you know, with nothing in between it. And so, I can put my foot, I'm, I'm really strong, right? So I can stand on one leg, put my foot on the toilet system, have my towel on the toilet seat and um, a pump bottle of, I had like, I've got like a big pump bottle of face wash, which I can wash my body with as well. So I figured that was the best thing to do. And I just kind of twisted around underneath the water with my leg up in the air on the toilet system and it worked last night and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wash my hair then. So this morning I managed to wash my hair. And so I was really proud of myself because my face wash bottle, it's pretty big, um, it hasn't got much left in it. And so the base isn't sturdy enough. So when I was trying to pump it with one hand, you know when you do that whole pumping it down and catching it in the same hand job. Um, it fell off the toilet and I'm like, oh, because <laughs> I couldn't just put my leg down for a second because the water would run down. I had to keep it above the height of my hips, right? <laughs> so I did a one-legged squat to pick up the bottle and I'm like, most people wouldn't be able to do this, but I can. It is Monday. Yay. Hey, Terry. Yeah, I hope I feel better soon. It's good to get it sorted out, but I'm not looking forward to When I finish work, I need to ride myself to the hospital. I'm not looking forward to that. I'll have to do it straight after I've had a painkiller, for sure, because um, after, after I'd had the surgery yesterday, I rode myself home via two shops because I needed to get some more food in. And I um, was just like, I need to get home before the anesthetic wears off. <laughs> because I knew, you know, me pedaling and all of that kind of stuff on a fresh, uh, freshly operated on like, all right, this isn't going to be good when I get home. So when I got home, I was just like waiting for the anesthetic to wear off. Let's pick, pick some cards out. Um, I'm going to go through Aries through Pisces, just to get some midweek um, guidance for us all. Stick around to the end because I'll be pulling out one of these the secret manifestation cards from Rhonda Byrne out for all of the, you guys that stick around to the end of the show. And of course, book yourself in for one question reading. So after, after I got home and then the pain started kicking in and I took a painkiller, then it was okay. But I tried to do my readings. I came and sat here at my desk and tried to do the private readings and before that, I'd 
been trying to listen to a video, watch a video and pay attention to it and I kept on having to start it again. You know when you do that, you have to keep on starting it again. It's like I didn't catch any of that, start it again, start it again. So I don't know why I thought I'd going to be able to focus on my work. I sat here at my desk and I'm like, you know what, I can't do it. So I had to email everyone that had got private readings yesterday saying, and that 48 hours thing, can't do it at the moment. I'm going to have to wait until my head's back together. Morning, Diane. How, how is everyone today? Are you good? I don't know. It's like having a cold, having an infected shin. And it's not an ideal time to have an infection on my leg because in three days' time, it's Songkran. It is the water festival. And I've got to go every day to get this dressed, which means the water festival is when everyone throws dirty water around because it's dirty water that we've got here. They ain't throwing bottled water around, that's for sure. And... I've got to get it, go go to the hospital and get it dressed with people water flinging and then try and get home and keep it dry. And I'm not going to be able to party because how could I keep, even keep it dry anyway? So I guess I'm missing the festival this year. It's fight night tonight. I'm excited. That's why I went to hospital yesterday because I went to go and pick up my fight night ticket for tonight, yesterday, and saw my boys and I missed them. And it was really nice seeing them again. And they said, they looked at my leg and they said, you need to go to hospital. They need to cut that open and clean it out. I'm like, mm, you're right, I do. Aries, who's Aries? Who's got Aries in the chart? Sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. I do. Aries, midweek madness. What have we got going on for Aries? Page of Swords, you're being noticed. Now, this could be in your work. This could be in your love life. People are watching you. People are paying attention to you right now, Aries. Not to make you feel paranoid or anything, but just know, especially for those of you kind of waiting to be noticed, waiting for something to happen. Oh, you're being noticed at the moment. Sometimes things are already happening behind the scenes before people reveal themselves to us. It feels like a work thing to me, but it might not be. I mean, it could just be anything. Whatever you're waiting for at the moment, people are noticing you. They're going to come your way soon, Aries. Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Who, who's a Taurus? Me. It's Taurus, sun sign. <coughs> I'm Aries, moon, Aries. I can't remember. Aries, Venus. Oh, I've got a lot of Aries in my sign. Taurus, you've got the six of swords. The universe is trying to move you forward. It is. It knows what's in your heart, Taurus. You are manifesting it. Reciprocation. Tauruses, Tauruses have been going through it in the last few years and if anyone didn't notice, they have. It, it's like, it's been a gnarly, get yourself to the level that you should be at Taurus and it's, it's not been easy. You're manifesting this reciprocation but we've had to go through it in order to get there. The universe is still moving you toward that. The universe knows what's in your heart, Taurus. Sometimes we think, oh, law of attraction, I've got to ask for things and I've got to like do, do, um, vision boards and stuff like that and you don't because the universe knows what's in your heart it knows better than you what it is that you want you don't need to be able to formulate it into words or put it into pictures on a board the only thing that that stuff does is get you aligned with it so when our minds and our heart our conscious minds are are on the same page as the universe that helps us to be making the right decisions that helps the universe get us there do you know what i mean it, it, if we are contrary to what the universe believes about us, so the universe knows that we deserve and we're thinking, I, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve anything good, then, of course, it's going to be very difficult. That's not aligned, is it? That it's going to be very difficult for the universe to get us to make the decisions and, and make take that action to be able to get ourselves there. So, it's a bit windy. Very windy. A bit cold. It's getting really hot here. Really hot. <coughs> I'm not looking forward to going in the hospital this afternoon. I thought I could either go and get it dressed this morning, in which case I wouldn't be able to work, or work and then go, but they do have a break. <laughs> hospital closes. The hospital closes for lunch. And it was kind of nice going yesterday because my young friend was there. My friend was there with her daughter and I really get on well with her daughter. So I was hanging out with her and she was coming around me in the different stations I had to go to. 
getting distracted. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Who's Gemini? Hey, Lisa. And if anyone wants a one-question reading, book yourselves in while I'm doing this. Book yourself in at any time, and I'll do it. That's the link. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. I think I'm Gemini rising. Why have I not looked at my chart for a long time? Gemini, strength. Mm. You know that Aries moon yesterday, according to my guides, was about taking a risk. Like the only way to it is through it. So it's about not avoiding something. Gemini, you've got to tap into your courage and do something. You're Cancer. Thank you. I'm sure I'll have a speedy recovery now. Now I'm getting it looked at. It's very easy here to get infected, you know, a scratch or anything. And usually I'm fine. Usually I have little injuries and it's fine. But yeah, they said at the hospital, I think an insect bit me and whatever. It put in there, it's still in there. So that's why they need to stop opening it up. Because I was thinking it was the shower that was making it worse, you know, getting reinfected and they said, no, there's, there's something in the initial assault. Cancer, for Mandy. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. When I went to the gym yesterday, they said, oh, you're sick again. And I said, no, I'm still sick because I was sick. I started getting sick last night. night. Uh, cancer, Ace of Wands. Cool. You've got something exciting starting off. Get excited. Something good's coming. If it's been stagnant for you, Cancer, you've got something really good coming. Now, often we do get a bit of a lull before something exciting starts. Such as life, you know, to be a little bit like that. Oh, I've got nothing to do. Oh, no, I've got too much to do. You know how we do that. It's too hot. It's too cold. <laughs> Your cancer, Marie. I remember that one. Lots of cancers, huh? Leo. Mmm, Leo. Somebody loves you. King of Cups. Feelings for you. Now, just tapping into this person's energy for you. Because <laughs> it doesn't have to be romance, but it could be. <coughs> Could be want, people wanting the best for you. So many people that don't want the best for us, right? Frenemies. Don't you hate that? People that try and be our, pretend to be our friends, but you can tell us a bit of a eh behind it. Uh. Distance ourselves from those people. But this one, no, this is someone that's got feelings for you. They tend to be the quieter ones, the ones with empathy, right? The good people. People with empathy do tend to be a bit quieter. Not not necessarily the people that will approach you um, with with confidence. They they tend to be the ones that want something. But yeah, be careful of the people that come coming on strong. They might not be right for you. See this one? He's just sat there with his eyes closed. It's a very calming sense. It, it might be the quiet one. Yeah. Pay attention to the quiet ones, they're the good ones. Contrary to what the loud, the loud ones will say, they've got to watch the quiet ones, they're the worst. No, pay attention to the quiet ones, Leah. Mm, Virgo, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Watch your midweek guidance. Midweek messages. That's what I wanted to say. Virgo, I don't know, I'm a little bit spaced out. I feel a bit different today drugged up hmm. Virgo temperance I'm gonna get another card out slow down baby you're moving too fast Virgo slow down the higher from there's lessons to learn on the way so trying to jump ahead to get something to work pay off work out, come to fruition, um, don't rush it, there are, there are obstacles to overcome, there are lessons along the way and it's okay, that means you're a human being, 
just winted if you don't get the fruit. It's not time for fruit yet. Okay. And Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, Libra. <coughs> Libra, what about Libra? Midweek message for Libra. Oh, heartbreak, Libra, what's happening? Yeah, Mandy, pay attention to the quiet ones. Holy shit, Libra. Everyone hug a Libra. They're not okay at the moment. <laughs> Three of Swords and the, uh, the Seven of Swords. Ooh, ooh, gnarly cards. Yikes. Ouch. Somebody deceiving you. Someone lying to you. Someone being deceptive. Breaking your heart. People are shit. Most people are. Especially these days. How, how is it that we've got so many narcissists? So many people lacking in empathy. What the hell's going on? But there are so many like that. There's so many people that don't have your best interests at heart. Don't let that break your heart. Just realize people are shit. Most people are shit. Don't, just, you know, when you notice it, go, it's, that's about them. It's not about me. Don't let it break your heart. It's not about you. I hate that about the law, some law of attraction teachings that put it all, pin it all on you. It's like, well, what did you do then to attract that? It's like, no, they're just shit people. You just let them in. You just continue to let them in because you're a good hearted person. Don't do it. Get rid of them. Hey, Natalia. What sign are you, Natalia? Next up, we have Scorpio. Sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, Scorpios. Ooh, the Empress. I need another card for Scorpio. So the Empress is a very nurturing energy. It's also about self-esteem and things like that as well. No, but it is. It's a nurturing energy. I'm getting it someone else's energy this time, which is strange because I don't often get that from the Empress. But the Three of Pentacles, yeah, about teaching, learning, other people, collaborations, someone else nurturing you. It's time to let someone else nurture you, Scorpio. Oh, I can't imagine Scorpios doing that. It's time now. Let someone else nurture you. This could be a work thing. Like somebody, let someone else mentor you. Give you a leg up, that kind of thing. But it requires learning from them, so it requires a little bit of humility, Scorpio. <laughs> Accurate for Libra. Mm. Oh, who's next? Sagittarius is next. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. For any newcomers, I'm on drugs. Painkillers. I had minor surgery yesterday, so I'm a bit... I'm only taking ibuprofen, but I don't... I, I'm very clean living kind of a person. I can't even remember the time the last time I had a drink. I was trying to think of that because... It must have been... It wasn't last fight night. I didn't drink last fight night. Perhaps the one before... Ah, Sagittarius, Page of Pentacles, Six of Swords, Universe trying to move you forward, but you've got to reach higher. Okay, Page of Pentacles, you're reaching too low. Page of Pentacles means that you've got to have like a small offer. It's for you to say no to that. The Universe is trying to move you on to greater things. So raise your self-esteem, Sagittarius. You know, something that's not good enough for us comes along and then... If we say yes to it, it doesn't work out because the universe is like, what the hell is she doing? That's not right for her. It gets taken away from us. And in, in our lack of self-esteem, we go, oh, my God, I was pitching myself too high. And I'm not even deserving of that because it didn't manifest. And it's like, no, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Reach higher. You deserve much, much more. So the universe is trying to give you signs. Page of Pentacles is too little of an offer. Sagittarius, raise your game. Realize who you are and what do you deserve. Sometimes we can believe society, right? Of like what's important. Oh, lots of money is important. It's like, no, it's not. I mean, I'm not saying that money is not important, of course. We use it, we need it. But lots of money, that's no, just someone that's prioritized that. So I would say what's important is... A growth mindset, taking care of ourselves, be, being um, changes, positive change that we want in the world for ourselves, you know, being um, 
thingy. I want to say integrated. That's not what I mean. In integrity. That being that being integrity. Um, doing better, being better, evolving. I would say that that is tops. So if we believe that, then and prioritize that and value that, you're going to see people in very different lights. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Ooh, Capricorn. Oh, you got the King of Cups. Someone's got feelings for you. Again, this might be about romance, but it might also be about new friendships. It might be about um, people noticing your work and stuff like that. Eight of Wands is direct communication. Expect some communication. Expect someone to prioritize you or to want to give you something or care for you or something like that. Expect it. And be open to it too, Capricorn. Don't go, oh, what do they want? Or are they trying to hurt me? What if it's a good thing? Maria, just a shock. <gasps> Local medium passed away. Oh, wow. Sorry for your loss. You're Capricorn, Alana. Hello, Alana. <coughs> oh, that was Capricorn. Next, next is Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Aquarius, midweek message for you. Knight of Wands, King of Pentacles. Okay. Aquarius, if you've got someone who is stable in your life, it's okay to have fun with them. Th these are different kind of energies, and it feels like love life guidance, this, for Aquarius. The Knight of Wands is play kind of an energy, but it's a fun kind of an energy, you know? It's flingy kind of energy. But the King of Pentacles is very, it's, it's not that. It's very, someone very stable, you know? It's a long term kind of person. But this... I'm just getting this message that fun, fun, flirty, having a fling energy doesn't mean that it turns the other person into a player. You can have that fun, flirty energy. You don't have, you don't have to be serious. It's, you know when we say like serious about a relationship? What we're really talking about is commitment, not seriousness. We want to have fun with someone, right? <laughs> not seriousness. Um, Aquarius, if you think, if someone is coming across as like successful, stable, all of that kind of thing, you don't need to impress them in a serious kind of way. It's not a job interview. Have fun with them. Do you get what I'm saying? Everybody, do you get what I'm saying? I know I've done that in the past. It's like almost try and impress a date. I don't do it anymore, but try and impress a date with my... Almost like it's a job interview, like intellectual. It's almost like a competitive thing, but it's not competitive. You're not competing with them. It's like competing with everyone else, going, oh, I'm worth it, when I don't feel worth it. You know what I mean? Like trying to impress someone with your accomplishments and stuff like that. Don't do that. Do be fun and flirty. Aquarius. I didn't think Aquarius ever needed that. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Pisces. Midweek message for Pisces, please. Pisces, romance. You got the Knight of Cups out. I need more clarification on that. Receive romance. Let yourself be seduced. I just I heard that. Let yourself be seduced, Pisces. Ooh. Receive it. Receive the romance. Open up. Nice. <clears throat> Okay, so focusing at the moment on trauma release because it's important. And I've been through so much trauma. You despise those interview type days, right? But I know I'm guilty of doing that. I'm guilty of thinking that I need to impress someone. Like, almost, like I said, what's important to me, empathy and growth mindset and things like that. But in the past when I've believed society and I've, I've been that person trying to 
you know, prove myself. And, oh, I've got a business and I do this and I do that. As if that's important, as if that's going to make somebody treat me better in a relationship, as if that's going to, you know, bring the person in that's right for me. But it's linked with lack of self-esteem for sure. Well, let's get some cards out then about trauma release. For those of you that don't know, there's a flossy cat. I'll let her in. Come on then. Oh, second thoughts, huh? She will not stop rubbing herself against my dodgy leg. It was very hard to keep her off it before. She just wants to rub herself against it. Okay, trauma release. Yeah, because, you know, I have released so much trauma. Sure, I've got a little bit of PTSD left, and I, I think that's just my nervous system, you know. When you've been abused since birth, and I was abused since birth, well, a kinesiologist told me it was actually conception, <laughs> abuse since conception. But when your nervous system, as a child, your nervous system is being created you know and when you go through that your nervous system grows like that there's some reprogramming we can do but it seems like not completely anyway I do have I have released so much trauma and it's so important to do that and and, and trauma can lurk as well and, I, you know, we hear it so much when people realize and they put memes out about it. It's like, this thing is a trauma response. This thing is a trauma response. It's like, oh, yeah. But, I mean, we're not machines. You know, we are human beings. And, sure, things that we do might be a trauma response. But if we didn't have any urges for anything, we wouldn't be a human being either, you know. Anyway, we've got the Two of Cups. It's about a love match. Now, the reason that I was saying about that trauma response thing is an overfocus and a limerence, an overfocus on romantic relationships. Who's guilty of that? Me. Um, is mosquito trauma response. But is focusing on romance a bad thing? No. Is overly focusing on it a trauma response? Yes. I was listening to some podcasts yesterday. Um, what's his name? Joe Rogan. I haven't listened to him for years. I mean, off, out of the algorithm, off my radar completely. I haven't listened to it for years. And I think when he moved off YouTube is when I stopped watching and listening to him. Anyway, he's on there now. Um, and I just had it on the, the background, listening to it. And it was interesting because he was talking about trauma response. He was talking about when he had a fight with a kid at school and got took to, took to the taken to the headmaster's office you know as you do you get told off about it and the headmaster got them to hug each other and he said he'll always remember that hug because he, he could sense how desperate that boy was for love and, and he realized in that moment this boy isn't being loved at home and he you know we had a fight together just to feel something you know um and it hit me, it hit me, because I know that whole Muay Thai thing of, you know, fighting my friends, it's the only contact I have with people. And it's from the same place, it's from a lack of love place. Your son, PTSD too. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> it's just so annoying. It's just like, I, I can tell when it's gonna come because there's gonna be a trigger, you know? And it's like, uh... <laughs> And for me, it's around being attacked in my bed. My dad used to beat me up. He used to wake me up to beat me up. Um, concerning things about that as well, stripping me naked to do it. Weird. 
But half an hour here, my brother being beaten first, that would wake me up and it's like, oh God, it's my turn next and I'll try and hide and it's just horrible. And then and that turned to when my brother hit puberty, it turned a lot worse when he started becoming my abuser too. So I was attacked a lot in my bed and then as an adult too. And so, of course, nervous system, not being able to feel safe when you're sleeping, very tricky. I mean, there's certain things that we can deal with in our waking selves, you know, and heal ourselves. But healing my sleeping self, healing my nervous system of my sleeping self, it feels impossible to me. All I can think is like the, a sleep therapy, you know, a therapist talking to me in my sleep to reach that deep, unconscious part of myself. That's even possible. I don't know. Ooh, two of Cups and Death. Okay, major change is the Death card. I need to read it out, apparently. So, Two of Cups. Talking about a trauma response of overly focused on romance, but also talking about lack of love, a love deficit causing us to do that, focus on it, perhaps too much. Perhaps. Or... Hmm. other patterns around that that don't serve us, like waiting for someone that's not available and shit like that. Death. It's just death. I need to read. In front of a beautiful green garden, we see a woman whose upper chest is an open rib cage. Partly skeleton, she seems to be dead, but she's in fact full of life. Her body is a vassal for blooming flowers. The white lilies emerging out of a skeleton are a, are a symbol of purity. She jumped off the bed in order to mess around with my sore leg again. The white lilies emerging out of a skeleton are a symbol of purity, innocence and hope. The woman gazes at a butterfly at a butterfly resting on one of the lilies, a symbol of resurrection and life. The butterfly also stands for transformation, change and hope. The card shows that the death is not the end, but the start of something powerful and new. Right. So from sleep meditation, could do it. Yeah. Maybe I should make myself something to listen to at night. Hmm. Thanks for the idea, Alana. So death, significant change, but something very positive coming from it. So we're talking about releasing our trauma, noticing, as I said, we don't need to beat ourselves up for it or, or like, oh, well, this is wrong then. You know, I'm wrong for focusing on romance. It's like, no, there's something right about it. There's something right about wishing for love, wanting that. But you know, the guides consistently over the years in this show especially have been pushing us to self-love. It's like, well, loving yourself first, loving yourself first, empowering yourself. Look at what you're choosing. Look at how you're choosing it. Love yourself instead. Choose better than that. You know, that is what we've been doing throughout the years in this show. And another major change where it comes to love so we're not beating ourselves up for it, nor saying I shouldn't want I shouldn't want this. You know, that's like what some religions do, saying, oh, like um, wishing for things is 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 what's hurting you. So have no expectations and no wishes for anything. Just deny that you want anything. It's like that's just like unhuman. <laughs> That's just ridiculous because there's so much growth that comes from wanting things and there's nothing wrong with wanting things, especially basic things like love, right? It reminds me of that card. It's going to be here. Yes, here it is. Nest. It's reminding me of this card, Nest, an emotionally secure loving family is important to you. Damn right it is. Damn right it is. And it might feel like an emotionally loving, supportive world is important to you. The utopian dream that we have when we are damaged. When we have that trauma, we're looking for perfection. 
we're thinking that we're in the wrong place on the wrong planet don't fit in it's like how i can't possibly heal myself and be good with this shithole that planet that we're on with all the terrible people that are here but we can that's the thing when we heal ourselves we can we can be around all that and not be affected by it we've got the judgment card judgment card about choices i'll read it because i'm lazy today I know I say that and everyone says you're the least lazy person in the world. <laughs> I know it's true, but sometimes I do feel lazy. Judgment. This card shows a female angel, a messenger of God, blowing a large golden trumpet. She's standing in the middle of a busy city calling all the people to rise up and take a stand. Yes, do the work, take a stand. And often when we hear that, we're like, yeah, I need to change everyone else. <laughs> it's like, no, we don't. We don't need to fix the world. We don't need to convince shitty people to be nice people. We just need to choose well for ourselves. Choose those that are making a change, the same changes as us. Be around those people. Taking a stand in that way. She's a reminder. You see, taking a stand is saying no, right? And having boundaries to people that don't have your best interests at heart. It's not saying they're wrong for that. It's not saying like, you, bad person, should in this lifetime be at the point where you are doing the same work as me and healing yourself in the same way as me. You have no idea. You have no idea where they are on their spiritual path and what they're here to do in this lifetime. No idea. And so we've got to like know we're at a school here and it's okay for people to be at different levels. We're not here to change them. We're here to find our people and grow ourselves within that. She's a reminder that in the end, we will all be judged for our actions and life choices. But past mistakes will be forgiven when we choose to change and make a new start. This card urges you to make amends by transforming your life. This card urges you to make amends by transforming your life. Make amends. It's not going backwards and trying to fix other people and fix situations that you're not aligned with anyway. There's no fixing that. That's like, right. It's like you want to go back to school to learn something, right? You don't go to kindergarten. You don't even go to junior school, primary school, whatever you want to call it. You don't even go to senior school or whatever you want to call that. You go to uni. That's where you go. You go where you belong. Now imagine if we were to go to kindergarten. I want to learn something new. I want to learn to be a personal trainer. I'll go to kindergarten. And then I go to kindergarten and I'm like, oh, these little kids, they're so stupid. Why, why aren't they learning about being a personal trainer? That is retarded, isn't it? That would be stupid of me to do that. We need to go where we belong to learn what we need to learn. And it's the same thing, keeping yourself, through a lack of self-esteem and personal trauma and all of that stuff, keeping yourself around the people that have done the damage in the first place. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That isn't gonna do it. So, you make amends by transforming your life. For some of you, this is about family stuff. Because I was getting that, whatever that card was, very strongly, that energy of it. It's about family stuff. What did your family really want on a soul level? The people that have hurt you, for those of you, is family trauma. What do they really want on a soul level? We know what they want on a surface level. They want to pull you back in, carry on you, abusing you, whatever. But what do they want on a soul level? When trauma is passed down the line, down the line, down the line, down the line. What do you think when they've passed away, or the ones that have passed away, what do you think that their higher selves are saying at that point? Oh, I wish I'd have traumatised them a little bit more. I wish they hadn't broken away. No, they were like, good on her for breaking away. Good on her for sorting herself out. Good on her for never looking back. Good on her for finding her own people and then finding out how to, to have um, functional relationships with good people, how to be loved and how to you know, trans transforming it, that's what does it. it. It makes amends at a soul level. And so for those of you that are still trying to make amends or for those of you feeling guilty about not being able to go backwards and fix it, it's not even, 
possible. And the, and the Two of Cups is, is a focus on love. That's the thing. And for a lot of us, our focus on love, we have figured out how to unconditionally love. In fact, we're too good at that sometimes. We do it despite ourselves. Um, but the focus on how can I let love in? Who should I let love in from? For start. Judgment card is a calling as well. It's a strong calling. Remember other people are getting that too, that are on the same page as us. Queen of Swords, boundaries. So, so important. We can't do it by being naively. Ah. We can't do it by being naively open and unconditionally loving the wrong people. Oh, that's gonna get us hurt so bad over again. Repeat trauma. Repeat trauma. Trauma leaves clues. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to start making one video every week, hopefully, um, and blog about trauma and be focusing more on the trauma work now. Offering trauma coaching now. First pe three people to book and we'll get that reduced price. And trauma readings as well. Again, first three people to book in. One of them has already gone. The, the trauma readings. Not the coaching yet. Sandy, now you understand why I've been, you've been drawn to me. Same experience with father. Yours was sexual abuse too. Mine was only with my brother and then his friends was a sexual abuse. Not my dad, although there's something weird about wanting to strip your daughter naked before you beat her up in a bed, isn't there? Being backhanded across the face. Ouch. My dad used to smack me and it was when I was so tiny that I'd fly across the room, smack me across the head, but it hit my ear and it would perforate my eardrum. I remember the sound and I would fly across the room like a shuttlecock and my head would hit the wall on the other side. When I was like two or three, how fucked up is that? And I can see why, I can see why he was so frustrated. You know, I can see what led to him doing those things, you know? I mean, I'm not saying it's justifiable or anything like that, but I can see, you know, he, he was beaten badly when he was a kid too. And at the time he was having affairs and stuff. I didn't know that at the time, but, and, and she's left with the responsibility at home. She mentions it selfishly. You know, and he gets mad. First thing, he doesn't even want to be home. He gets mad and he comes and takes it out on us. You know, and I get it, I get it. I mean, we all try our best and I have no doubt that my parents were trying their best too. But ooh, what that leaves you with. Ooh. What that leaves you with as a child, not good. So Queen of Swords. But we can get over it, we can. And I am over it. And I, I confronted my dad about the point where he can realise, like, oh, I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Not the point where he can like, talk to me about it anyway. But he did, uh, when I was getting divorced, he did realise, he, he said to me, I really regret not showing you love. He's like, I never hugged you or kissed you or anything like that. There was a severe lack of love. Is... There is a severe lack of love in my family. Severe lack of love. Hence, you know. And, and the death card, look, it's like you ripped apart, but this card is saying, but there's all these flowers like blooming. It's what the guys have been saying over and over again. You've been through all this shit, but it's made you want so much better, so much better that people that have had a less gnarly experience, they don't want so much better because it's been kind of all right what they've been experiencing. It's only when we've experienced like really bad stuff that we really want better. So we are headed toward much better relationships and the universe is constantly trying to move us in that direction. But it is about us drawing boundaries. It's about us you know, being able to communicate those boundaries and good relationships. In order to have a healthy relationship, we need to reprogram ourselves and realize a whole lot of things about ourselves. First of all, be choosing the right people that we can even have that with. And so stop with the trying to be around the wrong people. Mm. So boundaries is a big part of it. Let's get one more card out. And then I'll be pulling out a manifestation card out for everyone. 
So if you want one of those and you're still around, pop yourself a message saying, me, please, I would like a card, and I'll pull one out. The Hermit. OK, still time to do it ourselves. You know, yesterday, so one of my best friends is 24. And he said to me, and I, do, I don't know why he said it, and I still don't know. But he said, is there something you need to ask me, Claire? It got me thinking. I'm like, oh, I don't know. He is one of my best friends. Very mature for his age. The hermit, being by ourselves, there's something to figure out still. Or being OK about being by ourselves. There's certainly not anything manifesting at the moment. It's, we're still on the path to it. For those of you resonating with this, on the path to a healthy relationship, <laughs> especially that. I want to swear. I want to swear a lot today. Especially this. An emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. Damn right. Damn right. And I want to experience it. And I thought it meant like having another baby. That's off the cards now. <coughs> Good relationships, receiving love, that stuff, you know. It's important. We're on the path to it. Keep on doing the work. Okay, Marie, uh, I'm going to get myself one out first. I'm going to get myself one out first. <sighs> okay. Happiness attracts everything you want. The shortcut to anything you want. Let's put that down. The shortcut to anything you want in your life is to be and feel happy now. So making choices that make us happy now. This one's for me. It's the fastest way to bring money and anything else you want. Those feelings of happiness will radiate out and attract back to you all things that bring you happiness. Which will not only include an abundance of money, but everything else you want. Yay! That's mine. I'm happier than I've ever been. Maria. And I don't know if you remember, but my ex messaged me last week, checking in on me, and then saying, if I need anything, just, just call him. This is the same person that a few years ago when I was really sick and I had no food in the house, I asked him to bring me some food, and he said, no, I don't trust him. I don't, I, he, he doesn't take care of himself. I know that he can't take care of me. And a part of me is like, I ain't even going to ask him to give me a lift to the hospital. Because he's not the person to receive from, even though he wants to be that person. He's not. And I don't want to get disappointed, you know. It keeps freezing. I'm surprised there hasn't been a power cut. <laughs> so we've had a lot of power cuts lately, which is horrible when it's really hot fans and the icon turn off and it's like oh shit now we're gonna cook <laughs> it's like oh it's gonna get sweaty sorry about the freezing the internet has actually been much better lately they did say that they were upgrading it in april i don't know whether it's happened already or what <sighs> maria proclaim it maria Proclaim it to create it. To speed up any manifestation, think, talk, and write about your desire in the present tense only. I have all the money that I need. There's no past or future for the law of attraction. If you proclaim it as existing now, the universe must get very busy very quickly. Sweet Maria. Lisa. Lisa, you have happiness attracts happiness similar to mine. It's a simple formula. You must be happy now to bring everything that makes you happy into your life through the law of attraction. Happiness tracks happiness. In other words, making decisions in 
everyday moments to be happy. And we've got to let go of the martyrdom, the whole martyrdom thing, the whole, but I should be around these people that need help. We've got to stop trying to be the savior like that. It really is not our place to do that. We've got to save ourselves. Lisa, save yourself. Be happy right now. Be selfish. Make decisions for your happiness right now. Sandy. Sandy, no pressure, but you have the power to bring peace on earth. <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> the world will change and our planet will change as each human being changes inside. One human being inspires many others. Are you seeing this too? Um, I hardly ever drink anymore, alcohol. And um, at last fight night, um, I sat with Neil, he used to live here, um, but he, he visits like once a year now. Anyway, I sat with him, and it was good to see him again. And he's from England. And he, he was going to get another beer, and he said, do you, want, do you want one? And I said, no, I'm not drinking, I'm just having this water, because I wasn't feeling very well, right? And he's like, oh, you're not drinking anymore. It's like, oh, how do you ever drink anymore? Because, you know, he said, is that an age thing? He said, I've, I, I'm feeling like that too, even though he was drinking, he was getting drunk. <laughs> he was telling me. Isn't that funny, the disconnect some people have? He was saying, yeah, me too. But he was kind of, he was drunk. <laughs> he was. I don't feel like getting drunk either. I was like, really? You're kind of drunk right now. I didn't say that. But he said, is it an age thing? You know what? I think it's, I think it's, we're reaching a tipping point of other, you know, a lot of people going, hang on, this is like this messed up. Why, why are we destroying ourselves with this stuff? Yeah, let's get happy right now and be okay about that. And then when other people are going like, what are you doing making yourself happy? Well, you should be helping me because I'm not happy. It's like, go away. <laughs> go away, misery. Go and find your miserable company. I'm not here to help you out. Anyway, back to Sandy. No pressure, but you have the power to bring peace on earth. And it is 100 monthly monkey effect, you know. And I didn't say that to him when he asked his question. Because he's not there, you know. <laughs> it's not that at that point because he was actually drunk already. But it, it's good that he's, like, even thinking about it. Mm. Uh, haven't you noticed that? People turning away from alcohol now. I notice it in the... the the weather seems to be going both ways. The ones that are getting drunk are just next level. The young ones, holy shit, what are these tourists? My God, I think it's got something to do with the with COVID, with the, with the ones that were teenagers, late teenagerhood, and being in lockdown and all that kind of thing. They are crazy, crazy. Like, I mean, I was a binge drinker and, and crazy stuff too but this is next level what the stuff that they're doing now wow it's my theory it's about covid and the lockdown and all of that kind of thing in those years where the where you are pushing it right and and i think i think the the natural progression was halted a while and it's all coming out now <sighs> Mandy, Mandy G. You need to hear that, Lisa. Yeah, sometimes we need permission, right? Especially about the selfishness thing. Because when we have a drive to heal ourselves, we can get so totally judgment. Totally judgment. Mandy G. Mandy, before you think another thought, <laughs> stop right there. Every thought will manifest unless you cancel it out with an opposing thought. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Predominant thoughts, really. Um, every thought doesn't manifest. Imagine if that were true. <laughs> that isn't, we know that that isn't true, right? Because we all have like random thoughts. Have you ever been driving along and then you're like, if I just move my wheel like that, I'd be like, Claire, come back. Oh, I think I'm back. Just me and the Mandy, just Mandy and the moon. Just me and the moon, Mandy. This one's for you. Just make sure it's come back because it did disconnect then and it's on a bit of a time delay. 
Mandy, just me and the Mandy Moon. It says it's an excellent connection, but I can't see me back yet. Well, let's presume it's back. Mandy, just me and the moon, Mandy, who you really are. You're whole, you're perfect, you're strong, you're powerful, you're loving, you're harmonious, you're happy, you're great. All of you guys that follow me, you're great. Really, you need to know that. Don't put yourself lower than everyone else or believe that. You can see me again, good. And Shelly. Shelly. Two minutes left. There's more than enough, Shelly. Uh, you have an abundance issues at the IU at the moment, but there is more than enough. The universe offers all things to you and everyone through the law of attraction if you choose it. Do you want there to be enough for you and everyone? Then choose that and know there's abundance of all things. There is. And we don't always experience that. And when we, we fall into a lack mindset, it's tricky to get out of it. It's so tricky to get out of it, but you can. So see all the abundance that's around you. There's abundance of all things. It's ridiculous the amount of abundance that's around. For starts, it doesn't matter how little you've got or how little's in your bank account or whatever. You are watching me on a device at the moment and that device has been made, thought up even, and the software on it and everything. So much abundance involved in that and that you've got it in your hands. Isn't it crazy? To be born in a time where if you weren't at home by a phone, no one could get in touch with you. And now we can go, hey, uh, to a thing on the wrist and then go like, <laughs> and ask a question and get an answer. That's well, not instant. It's a couple of seconds wait, which is a little bit disappointing, isn't it? But there's so much abundance. And if we just open our eyes to it, we can just go like, oh, my God. It's like, I am like, I am more abundant than the king of Egypt, the pharaohs in Egypt. Like, think of it like that. We are more abundant than that. Even if we think at the moment we're having a shit life with, with lack. Get in a time machine, go back to those times and go, look, look what I've got. Even if you've just got a phone and a watch. <laughs> and they'll be like, wow, wow, you're so abundant feel like that right now because we are there's unlimited supply it's everywhere and if we just change our energy like that it does get better but we've got to stop focusing on the lack each of us has the ability to tap into that unlimited invisible supply through our thoughts if we choose to so yeah less of the lackful thoughts hey lara 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 finally lara lara thank you lisa I do feel beautiful. It's the thing that gets said to me more than anything else. Which is like, it's so nice to have got to this point in life where it, it is said more than anything else by beauty. Lara, Lara. And I claim it too. Um, and I'm not embarrassed by that too. And when you say that in videos, there's some very insecure people that want to tear you down for it when you acknowledge that you're beautiful and how great you are. People want to tear you down for that. And, oh, you're not that pretty. You're not, you're not, you're not. <laughs> Lara, feelings are powerful manifestors. Remember that worry attracts more worry. Unhappiness attracts more unhappiness. Disappointment attracts more disappointment. Fear attracts more fear. And remember that joy attracts more joy. Happiness attracts more happiness and love attracts more love. Self-love attracts more love from other people too. There we go. Thanks everyone for coming along. I'm putting out a pick a card read this evening and it's called, it's um, Celtic Cross Tarot Spread. I did it on Monday. I'm going to be making another one to put out on Friday today and then I'll go take myself out to the hospital to get patched up again. So, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, yeah, thank you. Let's do this all over again in two days' time. I'll see you then. Bye. Oh.